Alright, so the next test that we're going to talk about here is our 300 yard shuttle. Um, so if you recall, this is the one that now requires us a little bit more traditional endurance uh, test here. So it was about a 25 yard split. We had the kids going down and back. So it required a little change in direction, but primarily we're, we're starting to get into our threshold type run, uh, looking at our aerobic fitness, our aerobic endurance a little bit more um, with this test. Um, roughly a minute of work is what the, what the kids needed to do to perform this. So we're starting to tie in you know, that, that more traditional back and forth running, a little cutting, change of direction, looking at our true fitness. Um, similar to what we, we talked about with our, our sprint test, the best way to improve this you go out and run. You go out and you do endurance-based drills. Um, obviously, our kids are practicing two, three nights a week. They might have weekend tournaments. We know that's not always practical, given the, their load. Um, on certain days when we know we have a break, yeah, you guys can get them out and run. But primarily, we are going to address that within our, you know, our program design and within our training sessions naturally. What we're going to talk about here is four home-based drills, strength-based drills. Um, drills that we can do, once again, as part of our warm-up or things that we can do at home to help just support um, kind of that concept of endurance. You know? um, so with this, what we're really looking at is talking more about now our efficiency um, and the quality of our movement. You know, the, the big thing that we can do besides get out and run is try to make ourselves, when we are running, more efficient within, within those mechanics and within that so that we don't have to work as hard. We don't have to have that heart rate get up as high. We don't have to physically use our body and our muscles and our energy and all those stores as quickly as we would if we're a little bit more efficient. Um, we get efficient by being stabler, by being, by being a little more stable, um, by having good core control, um, by in a sense trying to avoid, avoid some of these energy leaks that, that happen from, from inefficiencies, from dis, um, dysfunctions, from asymmetries in our body. Um, so these four drills are going to help us kind of clean up our core in a little bit, clean up our mechanics a little bit so that hopefully we are more efficient so that when we go into either our running drills or into our training drills, we can now kind of improve that fitness um, without having to expend as much energy um, in the process. So the first drill that we're going to look at is what we call a single leg bridge. It's going to focus primarily on our glute um, with a little bit of a hamstring component as well. So for this one, all we're going to do, we're laying down on our back. We're going to have our heel into the ground. I'm going to engage my core. I'm going to even probably push my hands into the ground a little bit. That'll help me engage my core. And all we're really trying to do is squeeze this glute cheek, lift, hold for a second at the top. We come right back down. Pause at the top, come back down. So as we get to the top, what we're really trying to do is same thing. Almost look at that straight line. Can I get my hips up? Can I get that glute to activate? Can I hold? Bring it back down. We'll work both sides. Three sets, 10 reps or so. Um, on both sides there. The next one, primarily our core now. So it's a pillar circuit, it's a plank circuit. You'll hear it called different things um, depending on who you talk to here. So we're primarily gonna work abs, obliques, um, that transverse abdominis, some of those deeper, deeper abs that sit in there. So for this one, same idea, it's a ground-based drill. Elbows and toes is a great way to start. We're looking at a flat back, everything stays locked in, and we're just simply holding for time now. Um, for time, what we're looking at, Realistically, we can start with 10, 15, 20 seconds. As, as our kids show improvement, as they show they can do it with proper mechanics, the sky's really the limit in terms of the hold, uh, the times that you can go with. So you can bump yourselves up to 30, 45, 50 seconds, a minute type time. So that's our front plank. With that, we're also gonna work on our side. So the side, elbow's gonna be right underneath our shoulder. There's a couple of things that we can do with our feet depending on how, how solid we are with this, but the natural way would be just to stack our feet, we lift our hips, we hold here. If our kids are struggling with this one, there's a couple things we can do. We can give them a little bit more of a base. So we can put maybe our top foot in front and just have a little bit more of a base. We can pretty much take them down to even their knees. So even before we progress them, maybe we just start here. So this is gonna be more just based off of uh, how your kids are responding. If they're really struggling to stay up at all, we can progress them back a little bit. Start with five, 10 second holds. As they improve, we build that time. Obviously we'll get both sides there. So that's our pillar circuit, our plank circuit. Same thing, two or three rounds, start with 10, 15 second holds. As they show proper mechanics, good form, as they get a little bit stronger, you can start adding, adding some time to that. Um, next one that we're gonna do here, um, in a sense, is just almost a split squat hold. So we've talked about within our warm up, within our 30 meter sprint, almost doing a walking lunge. That's a little bit more advanced, it requires us to move a little bit, um, but we're tying that into sprinting. With this one, we're just going to basically turn this into a stability drill and into a, almost an endurance drill because we literally just want you holding that posture in place. 
and we're just going to burn, burn the legs here a little bit. So I'll demonstrate to the side. So we've got to get back into that basic split position. We're dropping down, hands can be on the hip, and we're simply going to once again just hold this for time. Same progression as we did with the plank. Maybe it's 10, 15 seconds to start. As our kids get a little bit stronger, we can start pushing that time to 30 seconds, 45 seconds a minute. But we're really just trying to focus on our form here. Knee pretty much right over top of that foot, maybe a slight forward angle, uh, shin angle there. Chest, same thing. We're not sitting back. We have a slight forward angle there. We're just sitting into those hips. Hands can be on the hips. We can almost go into our running posture. But really, can we stay stable? Can we stay strong? We're gonna burn that quad those hips, those glutes here a little bit with that one. Both legs there, same thing, two to three rounds, 10 to 15 seconds to start, add your time from there. The fourth one, the fourth drill in this circuit is where we'll actually now just add maybe a little bit of a movement component to it. Um, we're gonna work on what we call a step up. So for this, if you're at home, you can use a stair, on a staircase, you can use, you know, a kitchen, kitchen table chair, um, just something that's obviously solid, that's not gonna roll uh, or slide on them. I'm gonna demonstrate with the bench here. So for this one, all I'm really doing, in a sense, is, is tying, getting into my running stride is really the goal at this one. So I'm going to start with one leg up on top of the bench. All I'm looking for is can I initiate from this hip, a little bit of a drive. I come up. I'm going to get into my running form. I'm going to work on my balance at the top for a second. I'm going to control it coming back down. So again, pop right up, hold, come back down. We're working both legs again. Same thing, three rounds, 10 reps or so per set.